From the mountains of central British Columbia to you listening around the world, this, my friends, is Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. We welcome you to tonight's show, including Revolution Radio Digitally. If you want to take a listen to our archives, they are free for you at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do old Davey the favor. Hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com. we got a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to some Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire, which is updated daily. Tonight's show is brought to you by Chive Charities. Help make the world 10% happier by visiting Chive Charities today. You can find them on our website. Jennifer Jean Delaney, also known as Callie, is a studious researcher in futurist topics such as the Mandela Effect, Morgellons Disease, and Artificial Intelligence. Currently working on her first album and releasing her first mixes on her path to becoming one of the world's best house techno and electro DJs, Jennifer is an uses her skills to apply with her experience and expertise in branding and picking domain names for the best possible result on Google with her clients. She has also worked on made-for-TV documentary appearances as an expert in the medical marijuana field, conspiracy theories, ufology, and video gaming as well. Tonight we are focusing on the Mandela Effect, which is going to be a lot of fun because this is something you either believe in or you don't. Is it coincidence, or was there a shift in the timeline? Then at the bottom of hour number three, I will bring you the SOR Newswire, brought to you by Paranoia Magazine. Let's get to this. Callie, what's going on? Uh, How you doing, my fellow right. Canadian friend? Uh, you know what? I'm doing great. Um, I got to say, you know, lockdown hasn't been that much different for me. I'm one of those, like, tinfoil hat types, so I've just been hanging out here in the basement like usual. Oh, yeah. If you're an introvert like I am and Captain Shirk, I will tell you this. There is no better feeling than having the rest of the world feel like us right now. And I love it. You, you know, I do. You know, are they feeling like us, though? Because a lot of them are going stir crazy. So you got to ask yourself, like, I know we enjoy it, but like for them, it's, it's kind of like similar to torture. They've done some studies on that uh, isolation. Hmm. Very true. Very, very yeah. true. You know, and, you know, it, it's one of those things where I think we're all kind of getting used to it. We may not like it, but, you know, it's what's going on. It's what we have to do as a human species. If, you know, we want to do that whole survival thing. So we're just kind of into it right now and just having a good time. And that's why programs like ours are succeeding at the night, because you know, while people are stressed out during the day, having to wonder and be bombarded on social media, the mainstream media with everything that's going on. Here we get to talk about the woo. We get to get a little bit weird, strange, crazy, and that's what we're going to have fun doing tonight. So how did you get involved with learning about the Mandela effect? Well, you know, it's going to blow your mind. Um, basically, there was a, a clip in 2017 and that's what really woke my mind up to this mandela effect i woke up and looked at my buddy and his eyes were a completely different color and uh we just looked at each other and i go your eyes aren't brown they're green so what we did is we ran to his place and he was a drill rig operator so we went through all his medical paperwork because that's like a, a high value job you have um you have like all this medical paperwork every three weeks, every job, you've got a, a doctor's note. And on all the doctor's notes, we pulled them out and it said his eye color was brown. But I was staring him in the eyes and they were bright green, hazel. Well, that is weird. That is weird. So what changed yeah. his eye color? You know what? That's, that's up for debate because we don't know if this is quantum shifting. We don't know if this is CERN. We don't know if this is the 5D shift awakening. We have no idea what's going on, parallel realities. So that's what we're going to get into tonight. And we're going to explore a little bit of, you know, a little bit here, a little bit of there. So when you started going down that path with your friend whose eye color literally changed and they weren't wearing contact lenses, when you started looking into this and started delving into it, how did you go about that? What put you on that path that this was Mandela effect? 
Well, it was pretty much synchronicity because when I was searching the internet completely unrelated the next day, the whole Bernstein, Bernstein bears phenomenon came up on, um, I, just on Google images. I saw it written wrong. So I Googled it. And what's really interesting about that is, uh, the Bernstein bears is now spelt the Bernstein bears. And what changed in this is the EI changed to AI. And I wonder if that is a clue about the Mandela effect, artificial intelligence. Well, I mean, that's something that we are going to have to try and figure out on our end because there are a lot of people who believe that there is something really going on with this. There are a number of people who also believe that this is some sort of, of you know, human mind trickery because we tend to believe things in packs and we may have forgotten because other people have forgotten as well. And, you know, there are a number of cases going into this, but let's look into the history of this. When do you think it started? Well, that's interesting because the term was coined coined by Fiona Broom um, based on a death of uh, Nelson Mandela. Um, She remembered him dying in um, the 1980s in prison, where other people uh, remembered him dying in December 2013. And this affected thousands of people. I am not personally affected by it, but um, I noticed Mandela effects back in my life before, um, before I even heard of the Mandela effects. In fact, I lived in a bad neighborhood, and I thought, like, the street lamps uh, used to be green on the top, then yellow, then red. I thought because I lived in a bad neighborhood, they hired some janky construction when I saw that the red was on top and the green was on the bottom. See, that's a Prairie Province thing, because here in British Columbia, it has always been red, yellow, green. Always. Right. And some people are affected by this. So if it always has been that way for you, it might be a different timeline thing. This was in Arizona, so... So as you decide, yeah. So as you decided to start picking up all the all of these little things, you know they add up. And you know at at some point you had to reach deep and down inside yourself and say, hey, this is something that I need to personally look at. Yeah, absolutely. And you know I've always been a conspiracy theorist. Um, back um, in the day with uh, the nine eleven, when I saw that the random number generators were affected. That, that deeply shook me because it showed that the human mind actually was connected into reality in one way or the other because the random number generators, they stopped being random, and that really woke me up. All right. We have Callie on tonight. She is one of the studious researchers of the Mandela Effect here on Spaced Out Radio. You know, as you started to look through this and, and get into this, you know, when you when you go through this type of situation, it usually opens you up to a number of different other scenarios. So what else did you start to look at besides the Mandela effect? Well, that's really interesting. It actually kind of took me more out of conspiracy theories because, you know, I've always been a researcher of, you know, aliens. I've seen UFOs. I have uh, photos of them. I saw that giant green tear in the sky that was down in L.A. several years ago that tons of people, including like the famous uh, Jenna and uh, Jenna Marbles and uh, her boyfriend, Julian, which is a huge YouTuber. They posted a video of it and it was up in the sky for like 45 minutes. So when this happened, I switched more into researching simulation theory, um, 5D ascension, um, timelines, uh, you know, just physics in general. And I had gotten really into physics about two years before that. And I began to realize that this kind of stuff might actually be possible. But what blew my mind is when my reality actually started to shift around me. So what changed in your reality? Well, a, a lot did. So, you know, beam me up, Scotty. Are you, are you familiar with that one? Yes. All right. Well, what if I was to tell you that that was never said? I have heard that rumor before. Right. That that was a weird one for me because my, um, you know, my husband's name was Scott. He ran a collectibles marketplace. He uh, customized Star Wars figures, Star Trek. We had every single episode of uh, the Star Trek collection, like the special edition mail order one sealed on VHS. We were really into it. He has no memory of it. And before that, you know, I'd written a song called that, 
as like a tribute to him. It was like a common like inside joke between us. And then all of a sudden, boom, no memory of it overnight. Really? Well, that's a little interesting. That's a little interesting. You know, all day I have been trying to figure out which one it is for me that really kind of confuses me. And the the biggest one for me is the Ford logo. That's totally cute. Yeah, because I actually, I actually, and what brought this up was uh, about a year and a half ago, I had a listener of mine. We were doing a show on the Mandela effect, and he actually sent me a key, and that key does not have the little curly Q on the F, like the Ford logo says they've always had. But here's the other interesting part about this, was the other day, uh, you know, because I'm doing a lot of research right now while watching TV, and, and I say that very facetiously, so I just happened to have the show American Pickers on the other day. All right. And, and you know, I'm, I'm kind of doing my thing and doing my social media stuff that I do daily during this, you know, during the day to keep up to date with what's going on in the world and kind of have to do that, you know, for what we do here. And anyways, so the, these guys, if you've ever watched American Pickers, you know what they're like. They go through and they go to people's into, you know, barns and everything that are packed up and, and trying to, you know, find things. And they offer a bunch of money and so on and so forth. And then they show this Ford sign, you know, and they say, well, hey, dude, how much do you want for that Ford sign? And the Ford sign did not have the curly cue. Ooh, that is what's called residue. So that's kind of the smoking gun for all of us. Anything that I say that you don't remember, for the most part, about 90% of the things that are remembered by people that are very in memories, there is evidence of it, be it celebrities doing uh, parodies, skits, uh, you know, making fun of certain pop culture references, um, images, books. and, And it seems like a certain percentage is left behind, almost like somebody had written an algorithm. And it said, you know, if this, then this, you know, change this, but leave like, you know, 0.02% of it. Because, you know, one of the highly affected things is the Bible and um, other holy books. And there was somebody who came out who was a, a leader and a teacher of the Quran who said, we have people in our religion who memorize the words they're called. I don't recall exactly what they're called, but they're uh, the people who record it uh, in a spoken way. So they recite the Quran and that's their job is to memorize it and recite it. So he came out and said, yes, you know, our holy books are changing. Uh, the Quran is changing, but we have people who have memorized it. So the word is not changed for us, which I think is really interesting. All right. And that seems to be very interesting. So what do you think it is? What do you think we are going through right now? Well, I'm going to bring up a a quote um, from Philip K. Dick in 1977, um, when he declared that we live in an advanced computer simulation. Here's the quote. He said, we are living in a computer programmed reality. And the only clue to it is when some variable is changed and some alteration in our reality occurs. Okay. Um, So, you know, personally, I think it's uh, possible that we are living in a computer simulation because if you look at technology recently, I don't know, have you tried uh, VR headsets at all? No, I I have never tried one. They are mind blowing. They're literally mind blowing. And, you know, you mentioned I'm a gamer. So I started playing video games on the Sega Master System Um, and and like 8-bit video games. I remember Pong. I remember all of that. And you compare that to today's videos, which some are barely like, you know, you're watching it and you're like, wow, this is like a good CG movie. Where are things going in the next 20 years? And I think something really important to cover is several years ago, they um, actually discovered a way to delete and replace memories in animals. They successfully did this. You can look it up on, um, you know, journals, medical journals, uh, even on government websites. And really recently, um, Elon Musk came out with his plans uh, for Neuralink. Are you familiar with that? No, fill us in. All right. Uh, Neuralink is a brain chip, uh, a small um, 
hole is made in the brain and uh, very, very, very thin, like a micron or I think a tenth of a micron fibers are inserted by um, an artificial, like uh, intelligence, like managed uh, robot that place these fibers into the brain. And in doing that um, in animals, they have successfully um, transferred memories. So for example, they took um, a rat or a mouse and they taught it how to run a maze. Then they transferred the memories for that into the other animal, and it successfully ran the maze on the first try. Really? So, That's yeah, interesting. This is where it's fascinating, and this is where they're going in humans. It's incredible technology. So recently, um, a few years ago, they've been working on a different version of that with other like uh, medical branches um, that work with uh, disabled and paralyzed individuals and they were able to get somebody who is paralyzed put in the brain chip and then bypass the nervous system into the arms and now that paralyzed individual is able to play guitar hero which i think is just incredible that is incredible see for me if i were to look at this Okay, and there is some uh, some strange stuff that is going on. I mean, let's just be let's just be honest. Um, you know, I think that that part of the issue that we're having here is I think there could be a timeline skip somewhere along the lines. Maybe we went through to a different dimension where this stuff had, was going on and then all of a sudden, you know, there was some trickery going on and we flipped to another dimension because it was healthier for for humankind. I don't know. I am totally surmising on tinfoil right now. However, however, when you look at certain things that have happened and taken place, it does make you wonder what's going on. All right. You know, another one that, uh, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine earlier today about it is the movie Shazam. I totally recall watching or my buddies and I uh, talking about this movie Shazam with the actor Sinbad. And I hated Sinbad on the television. I thought he was a terrible comedian. You know, there are certain comedians I just didn't like, you know, uh, Bob Saget, not funny. Ray Romano, not funny. <laughs> right. Rosie O'Donnell, not funny. You know, I mean, all, all the and, and I had Sinbad in that same category. And I remember talking to my buddies about this, saying, no, I'm not going to see that. I can't stand that guy on his television show. I'm not going to go. That movie looks so stupid. And then now, yeah. 30 years later, to find out that it never happened. It's a little trippy. And then completely coincidentally, they released an unrelated movie called Shazam. Like, what was that last year? Which, well, a number of years ago with Shaquille O'Neal. No, uh, the, the movie Shazam. They just re-released the movie. It's a superhero movie as almost to cover up the searches for it. It was, really? it was like a box office hit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm just wondering, like, I, I don't know if I buy into the whole 5G aspect. I'm not sure if I buy into the whole CERN aspect, but I do I do appreciate a good portal story or dimensional shift story every now and again. And I think that's what it could be. I really do. You know, the Palladian um, channeling that's been going on, um, the High Council of Seven, uh, a lot of them have been referring to the 5G shift timelines, parallel realities, and actually being able to control your shifting from one place to the other. But I got to tell you, I, I don't know if I would have picked this route. So I'm not sure how much I buy into that one. Um, I think if we're going to go into D-Wave, I think that that is a more uh, pervasive argument than CERN. So CERN is the particle accelerator. Um, and you know what? They've had some really weird videos with occult stuff like, uh, you know, uh, Baphomet, uh, just weird sacrificial stuff, um, uh, occult dancing, all at the CERN facility. You can look it up. It's the most bizarre thing you've ever seen in your life. And why I think the D-Wave computers might be a little bit more of an interesting, like, uh, revelation into this subject is because the way D-Wave computers work allegedly, uh, according to the scientists and, uh, you know, the physics majors, is by borrowing resources 
from parallel realities. And, you know, basically by tearing a hole in both space and time in order to make our computers faster. And this is public science. This is talked about at like all the main uh, quantum physics meetings. It's like in TED Talks. It's, it's public and it's mainstream and it's wild. Well, you know, we only have about two and a half minutes here before we're going to go to break at the bottom of the hour. Callie, a.k.a. Jennifer Dolini, joins us tonight talking Mandela Effect. When we come back after the break, we're going to get into some serious examples that that uh, you have been able to find. And, and I think some of these might turn some heads out there wondering what the heck is really going on. How much do we know... You know, in regards to this entire phenomena, how much do we know that it's just not us misremembering, you know, whether it's Curious George with a tail or not, or or things along those lines? Yeah, uh, we're going to find out, and we're going to explore that together. Well, we have to. Are we sure it's just not false memory that we're dealing with? Well, you know what? That's the thing, is the residue... It tells a story. I mean, at uh, the Golden Globes, uh, they called sex and the city sex in the city, which is it's apparently always been sex and the city. Why is the Golden Globes saying that wrong? That's, that's something we got to ask. Why did Ed McMahon do a rap video about a job that he never had? True. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. Hold on, are you saying and, and, that, uh, which job are you saying for Ed McMahon? Uh, Ed McMahon works for Publishers Clearinghouse, and now he never did. And now Publishers Clearinghouse never gave out those big checks. Really? And, and it's huge because uh, there actually is a video of, I don't remember the exact celebrity, but he went on... Um, you know, evening, like, nighttime television talk show, and he presented a check for Ed McMahon, which makes no sense because Ed McMahon, allegedly, never works for the Publishers Clearinghouse. Oh, that that one's new to me. That one is completely new to me. Who's saying, you know, we got about 30 seconds left here. Who, who's saying that he, he never worked for Publishers Clearinghouse? Uh, their publisher's clearinghouse never actually gave out those big checks. It was actually American Family Publishing, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but um, there's actually a really good commercial that Ed McMahon did um, about going to people's doors because he's broke and getting those checks back, which makes no sense now. And you can look it up. It's a great revenue. Well, we're going to learn more about this and other weird, strange anomalies with the Mandela Effect. Callie is with us tonight. You can wave at her because she's in Saskatchewan where everything is flat. So just pick up your hand, (laughs) wave. She'll be able to see you and wave back. More Spaced Out Radio coming up. Mandela Effect coming up next. Hey, space travelers, this is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and balms are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. You can check us out on our website, MightyMooseBeard.com.
Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. Hey everybody, the SOR Space Travelers is open. For just five bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. If you like it hot, real hot then heat up your meals with bumblefoot hot sauce get your bumblefoot hot sauce today the sauce bumblelicious and the four million scoville unit bumble we're going in hot real hot coming out even hotter keep the milk nearby and tantalize your taste buds tonight bumblefoot hot sauce available now at kajans.com Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes, it's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver, the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Hello, Space Travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month. And follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye. Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience is proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. For more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. At spacedoutradio.com, we are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at spacedoutradio.com today. Need that weekend supernatural fix? Look no further than Spaced Out Saturday right here at spacedoutradio.com. I'm Stacy Edwards. And I'm John Edwards. Each Saturday night, Stacy and I are going to bring you the best in paranormal, cryptids, UFOs, you name it, and we're going there. It's all about the experience and to share the knowledge with all of you. So tune us in every Saturday night on Spaced Out Saturdays starting at 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, only at spacedoutradio.com.
From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and balms are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. You can check us out on our website. Welcome back to the second half hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Thank you so much for joining us. Really, really appreciate that. Reminder to all of you that if you've missed portions of this show or others, you can check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do old Davey the favor. Hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Tonight we are talking Mandela Effect. Callie, otherwise known as artist Jennifer Delaney is here. Now she's from the flatlands of Saskatchewan where they could see everything and everybody. So make sure you give them a wave and wave north, east or west. I don't think there's too many people waving south at you, but just in case she will wave back. Callie, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. We're going to get into some real juicy stuff here. I'm All right. You, bl- you blew me away right before the break, dropping the old Ed McMahon Publishers Clearinghouse. I swore that happened. I swore I, that happened. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> well, you know what? It's here at, um, you know, uh, here on Space Out Radio. We're just, all of us are just after the truth. And no matter how much that band-aid hurts to ripped off, dude, it's just got to happen. We've got to find that truth, no matter what kind of rabbit holes we've got to go down. Well, we got to go down. Tell me about it. What do you think is happening here? Because, like right. most of us, I, I'm a big fan of uh, trying to remember. I don't think I have that much of a confusing memory, but apparently it may happen. Yeah. Well, I have, I have this habit of writing everything down. So I've got, you know, just writing stuff down from the past. And a lot of my writing and my journal has not, like, updated with everything else. So I think that's really interesting. So written word has less of a chance of what's called taking the updates. So what taking the updates means is when things in reality switch to a new way and they don't look the way that they are before. And I really, um, you asked me what's happening there. So I'm going to ask you a question. Have you ever heard of the term deep fake? Deep state? Deep fake. Deep fake. No. No. Okay. So deep fake is this new technology where they use an app called Face App, and they're able to update old movies and videos to someone else's face using AI. Okay. And... Uh, it's very convincing. Uh, One of the trends is taking Nicolas Cage's face and putting it on literally everyone in old movies. So they've updated Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. They've updated Sesame Street. And it looks like Nicolas Cage. And it's kind of interesting because it opens up a completely new realm of possibilities to think. If we are in a computer simulation, then reality would be able to be updated. Uh, you know, they said that they found ones and zeros in like programming in reality and with quantum physics and reality being affected by observation. These are all questions we have to ask. But honestly, I don't know what it is. A lot of people think it's God. A lot of people think it's, you know, alien wars, dimensional shifts. A lot of people think it's demons. I mean, that's what we're here to figure out today. Well, what do you think it is? You know, I mean, there's a lot of people who have uh, have checked things out in regards to whether, and like you brought up CERN, a lot of people bring up portals, dimensional shifts. People have gone as far as saying that there was some sort of transition at um, when it came to the 2012 Mayan calendar ending. You know, there's a lot of different theories as to what is going on. Yeah, there, there definitely is. And it's, uh, it, it's really interesting. So I guess right now um, we can get into a few more like uh, Mandela effects. And I'm going to ask you something that I think you'll be familiar with. 
Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to ask you, how many people were in the car when JFK got shot? Four. Well, six, pardon Four. me. There were six people. Were okay. there not? Because there was there was JFK and his wife, there was a governor or a senator and his wife in the middle seats, and then the two security uh, officers driving and in the passenger seat. Okay, so that's really interesting. I think we should look to the chat. For me, there was only three people in the car, and then it updated to four, and then it updated to six. So as I was following the changes um, throughout time, the number just kept going up and um it's happened like that for a lot of people and you know how passionate jfk researchers are so it doesn't affect everybody that's the whole thing with this well there is some debate too as to whether or not there it was a four-door car or a two-door car exactly um and you know the amount of seats in the car as well uh, a lot of people remember two rows not three interesting Interesting. Um, I guess uh, we can uh, go on to like some Star Wars effects. Are you a Star Wars let's, fan? Let, let's go into Star Wars. We, yeah, you're right. you're the one driving the ship here. I, I'm curious to hear the examples. All right. Okay. So, what color is C three PO? Gold. Okay. What if I was to tell you he's never been all gold? He has a silver leg, like a bright silver leg that has apparently always been there. See, I don't recall that whatsoever. I don't recall that it's, whatsoever. It's weird, dude. And, uh, you know, Star Wars is highly affected. Um, like, uh, let's see, the famous quote, blank, I am your father. That would be, Luke, I am your father. James Earl Jones thought so too, but actually now it has never been Luke. I am your father. It is actually no, I am your father. Well, that is completely interesting. Completely strange, interesting. Strange. I know. So what I, mean, else, I used what, to do. Are, are there are there more with with uh, Star Wars? Um. Yeah. Let's let's see if I we might have to ask the chat on this one. I believe that now Chewbacca uh, was never a Wookiee. And uh, there's some other strange ones like uh, something to do with Chewbacca's metal. You're going to, we're going to have to reference some people about this, but um, there's a lot of Star Wars effects uh, that like just different things that happened in the movie that uh, were behaviors and like scenes that Luke had uh, being switched to Han Solo. Okay, so I'm just trying to remember here where where that's placed in, like at what part. You know what? I'm not the best person to act on ask on that one. There's so many of these effects that it, after a while you're just like, oh my gosh, there's thousands of them. It just oh yeah, Chewbacca doesn't get a medal, so that's that's a big one too. He doesn't. No. That's how do you not give Chewbacca? A, how how do you not give Chewbacca a medal? He deserves it, dude. I don't know. I mean, I feel bad for the guy. So do I. I almost want to, yeah. you know, break down there for a second. My goodness, give Chewbacca <laughs> his medal. You know, give him his medal. Let's do this thing. All right. So I, you know, what? I've got um, a conspiracy theory. One, another one for you. What was okay. the first terror attack on U.S. soil? The Japanese, World War II. Oh, okay, so uh, Pearl Harbor? Pearl Harbor, yes. Okay. What if I was to tell you, like, because all of us, I don't know, I was 9-11 truther. So for all of us who were really big in that, we were like, this is the second terror attack on U.S. soil with 9-11. But apparently, uh, the first terror attack on U.S. soil was on July 30th, 1916. 1916, um, and, okay. And that was when German agents destroyed $20 million in military goods. Five died, hundreds were injured, 
And the craziest part of this is it damaged the Statue of Liberty. So now, uh, apparently, in this timeline, nobody has ever been to the torch. Interesting. And, you know, a lot of people have memories. They said, I went to the torch. My mom went to the torch. And the Statue of Liberty is updated as, as well. It used to be on Ellis Island. And, like, you know, there's coins in the United States that say Ellis Island on them. They have the Statue of Liberty. And now um, the Statue of Liberty is actually on Liberty Island. So that was the shift as well. I don't know my American history well enough to say I understand that one. Okay, so we're in Canada now. So how about the movie Risky Business? Right. Okay. Do you remember the scene? It's like highly parodied where, you know, we, we've got um, Tom Cruise and he's dancing with his Ray-Bans on. He's got his shirt on and he slides through and he's all like, you know, kind of in his skivvies. Yes. Okay. Do you remember the sunglasses? Ray-Bans. Pulls them off. Yes. No Ray-Bans ever. Maybe I was too busy uh, checking out Rebecca De Mornay in that movie. <laughs> you know what? It's possible. It's possible. Okay. I'm going to get you to move a little Monop- bit closer back to your mic. All right. Monopoly Man. Uh, does he have a monocle? Yes or no? I always thought he did. He has never had a monocle. Um, I guess uh, we've got Curious George. Uh, no longer has a tail. I'm gonna, your your sound is going a little bit muffled here. I'm not, I'm not sure if you're on a headset or not. All right. That's um, better. Yeah, I've got a headset on. Okay. I accidentally had my finger over the microphone. I apologize well, there. Yeah. Well, that'll do um, it every time. Yeah. All right. So some other ones are the thinker statue. Uh, his hand has moved from um, the top of his head down to his chin. And we've got some real interesting residue there on this one where people pose in front of the statue in the wrong position with the statue behind them having changed. Was he ever on one knee, though? I thought he was always sitting. Oh, you know what? You're right. He was always sitting. <laughs> Yet people keep posing uh, like they're on one knee. You know what, dude? I think, like, I completely missed that, and I've never actually heard that before, but I, my grandma had that statue in her house, and now that I'm remembering it, you are 100% correct. <laughs> yes. We solved one. We solved one. There we go. We solved one. Oh, All right. Uh, I got to bring up in the chat room, Burgo says that Tom Cruise's shirt in Ritzky Business is now pink and not white. I uh... That is true. That one I don't. Like all, all the Halloween costumes of everybody is wearing a white shirt with sunglasses. So they kind of mess that one up. <laughs> a bunch of our American listeners are saying that Statue of Liberty has always been on Liberty Island. Ellis Island was where the immigration station took place. The, you know what? Everybody's hammer, got different memories. They're hammering... They're hammering us Canadians right now. Hammering us Canadians. Well, I lived in the States for, I think, 17 years. So um, everybody's got different memories. Well, I got, I got a good one for you. Um, how was Jesus Christ murdered in the Bible? Well, he was put on a cross. The stakes were put into his hands and ankles. And then he was poked by a a staff into the kidney area and the side area so he would bleed out. So one of the most common, uh, one of the most highly affected things that is affecting a lot of people is the Holy Bible. Um, And in the Bible, it said that there would be a starvation in the word of God in the end times. And it said, you know, wait until then, until you pour these curses upon the earth. And it said there'd be a great delusion. So now in the Bible, there's no record of Jesus Christ being crucified. Um, Acts uh, 530 says, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Acts 1329 says, whom they 
flew and hanged in a tree. So now there's zero recollection of Jesus Christ being crucified in uh, the KGB, the New International, any of it. Well, that's a little strange. That that one would yeah. kind of throw... <laughs> I, I don't even know how to answer that one. I, I really don't. I got to look this one up. Jesus... All right. Well, apparently it hasn't changed on Google yet. Uh, if you look up, um, people still write about Jesus being crucified, but if you go to um, like any of the Bible websites where you can look up scripture and it has all the different versions of the Bible, um, if you if you look up crucified, um, it it you know it, there might be a couple mentions to it, but in the main part of the Bible where it uh, refu- re- refers to Jesus' death, it says that he was uh, hanged on a tree. And it also now says, cursed is thee who hangs on a tree, and um, other passages like that. Wow. Well, I guess that w- that one would depend. I- I'll argue this one with you, because I can do that. All right. Okay, I can Absolutely. do that. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. I can argue that one is saying, which version of the Bible Okay. Um, KJV, um, New International Version. And, you know, pretty much, I went and bought about 40 Bibles. And I was desperately trying to find a version of the Bible that had the words that I remembered before. So some of the new words in the Bible are um, stuff, college, travelers, pilot, sport. And these are showing up in Bibles from the 1600s. So it's not like, you know, there's nobody who came in and switched your Bible. It's not a translation thing. There's a bunch of emojis in the Bible, the word AI, doctors, nurse, operation, experiment, shot. And it gets even crazier. Today, there was a new Mandela effect that got posted. And I grabbed my Bible and I opened it up. And I don't know if you guys watched Ancient Aliens, but, you know, I was a huge fan of that. I definitely followed like all the history with the aliens and I looked for any proof in like any kind of scripture that I could in any religion, you know, even like Egyptian, anything that referenced aliens. And, you know, I was pretty read up on that. And now in the Bible, and I thought, I think we would have heard of this. It says the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen in KJV. It says, in, in Isaiah, it says in Hebrews 11.34, quench the violence of fire, turn to fight the armies of aliens. <laughs> in, uh, this is uh, right here in Exodus 34.19. It says, all that, open, all that openeth the matrix is mine. Interesting. So I just pulled up this article from 2010 that says Swedish theologian Gunnar Samuelsson argues that the cross Jesus supposedly died on may not have actually been a cross. And he believes that uh, something called a starus was a Greek name for a cross or pole or something. He said, I could call it an execution device only to be from the common notion that it must be a cross because it mustn't be a cross. It could be a pole, for instance, or a tree trunk or something else. Yeah, you know, I didn't learn that in Catholic school. Um, but we can go um, to another one. Are you familiar um, with Isaiah 11.6? Um, no. What Felicity. animal lay with? What animal lay with the lion? The lion will lay with the blank. Isn't it the lamb? Yes, but now it says that the lion will lay with the wolf. And why this is really interesting is because. Um, the wolf in like spirit animals and animal totems actually represents deception. So um, the lamb has changed to the wolf. Well, that doesn't seem very fair. (laughs) You know, we've got other weird stuff in there. Um, You know, lactating men, uh, like 
over a dozen counts of the word unicorn and even statues like the statue of Moses. Um, I believe it was done by uh, Michelangelo. Don't quote me on that. But those statues now have demon horns on them. And, and you can look up the photos of those. The statues of Moses now have horns. I don't ever recall that one. It's weird, dude. Um, a lot of art has changed. Like, uh, you know, the Mona Lisa. Um, yes. In, in my experience, um, she was never smiling, and I studied um, the golden ratio extensively, and that's you know perfection in nature. You see it in a seashell. You see it, you know, in mathematics, and some plastic surgeons made this map called the golden ratio mask and they used it to lay over top of people's faces and then they would you know fix the features to kind of fit that template and right. um one of the only examples that fit was you know nefertiti but also the mona lisa but the thing about this mask is it doesn't work unless you have a completely straight face so now that she's smiling the golden ratio doesn't apply to her anymore and if we know anything about his art, we know that he uh, ritualistically used the golden ratio. But now the golden ratio is vanishing from this timeline of his art. It's incredible. Well, it comes down to it. Uh, okay, because that that's an important piece, because that's one of the greatest paintings of all time. And, you know, I have no intention of ever going to France because I'm not a history buff, but I would love to go to the Louvre to see that painting. I think there's a lot of people out there that would, as we only got about a minute and a a little over a minute left before we got to go to break at the top of the hour. But in regards to this, you know, how does this just slip by? How does this, this happen where all of a sudden what we know is truly changing? You know, all we can do is say that it is changing. Um, A lot of people think that this is God. They think it's the 5D ascension. They think that we're being woken up. And, um, you know, it's it's definitely a really personal thing. I mean, I saw a video of a husband and wife saying, you know, my husband hated ketchup and I loved it. And now it's backwards. So who knows what this is? I mean, we can only speculate for now. If anybody has any answers... I'm willing to listen, but until then, I'm going to keep researching. Well, that's all we can do. That's all we can do. And, you know, these symptoms and these Mandela effects just keep popping up. And they are, you know, I wouldn't say they're obtrusive or anything like that. But for many, they're tough to believe. For others, they are buying right into it. What is your thoughts? If you're in one of our chat rooms or on Twitter at hashtag Spaced Out Radio, let us know. That's the interesting part of tonight, the Mandela Effect. Callie here, researcher into it, YouTuber, writer, musician. She's breaking it all down for us, hour number two, with your questions as well. Now, if you're in one of our chat rooms or Twitter, make sure you put your questions in capital letters, and we'll get them on to Callie here in hour two. Stay tuned. More Spaced Out Radio coming up. The party is always on at the Moose Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is where you want to be when visiting Canada's west coast. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose cranks up the rock while serving some of the best rated food in the city. The menu starts at $6.95. Why party anywhere else in Vancouver when the Moose is right there? Get your horns up and rock with the Moose, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. Visit PurplePlates.com today. 
For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. Hi, this is Amber Beckrude, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we store all of the SOR show archives for free. And as an added bonus, every two weeks, I'm posting brand new content on Cryptid Tales, where I will get into some of the spookier legends and folklore from around the world and tell the stories that go with them. Find us at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio and check out Cryptid Tales today. Drop a comment and let me know what you want to hear. See you there. The SOR Vault is open for business, and do we have some cool swag for you to pick up? All you have to do is head over to our website and click on the SOR Vault. You have a variety of cool logos to choose from, and put them on anything you want. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs, you name it, we can get it to you. So do your shopping by supporting the store you love. Get your Spaced Out Radio swag at the SOR Vault today. For the price of one cup of coffee a month, you can become an SOR Space Traveler. The Space Travelers Club is a place where you can interact with other listeners, either live during the show or on our great forum. We want your stories, pictures, comments, and ideas. You'll get live video streams, exclusive content, and be a part of our newsletter. Stay in touch with everything SOR. The Space Travelers Club is just 5 bucks a month at spacedoutradio.com. Are you an experiencer of something strange that can't be explained? Do you want help finding out what's going on? I'm Ryan Stacy, head of the Experiencer Support Association, otherwise known as TESSA. We've teamed up with Spaced Out Radio to investigate cases filled out in the SOR Sightlines report. We are independent and there's no cost to what we do. All we need is your experience. Let's find out what's happening together on the SOR Sightlines report. Hello, space travelers, it's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month and follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye. Hey everyone, I'm John Edwards. And I'm Stacy Edwards. Together we're taking over Saturday nights on Spaced Out Radio where we're going to bring our own experiences of the paranormal and talk to the best people we can find to help bring you answers to your strange tales. We're here to entertain your need for weekend. Woo! So tune us in at spacedoutradio.com starting at 9.06 Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern where we can all get a little spooky together. Spaced Out Saturday nights right here at spacedoutradio.com. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Hey, space travelers, this is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. I'm feeling a little spicy tonight. What to do? What to do? Why not get Bumblefoot? Four million Scoville units of pure hard rock. Bumblefoot hot sauces come in three flavors. The burning bumble. Tone it down a bit with Bumblelicious and throw the sauce on everything. Spice it up. Bumble me, baby. Bumblefoot hot sauce. Get it today at kajans.com. 
We are scouring the world for the most intriguing stories of your day. Take the time to read up on the SOR Newswire, where our team, led by Captain Shirk, will deliver to you some of the best paranormal and supernatural news, along with some stories that will blow your mind from the weird to the wacky. It's the news outside the news that piques interest, and that's what we're looking to deliver to you. The SOR Newswire, only at spacedoutradio.com. Looking for creative ways to get your company out in the public? How about advertising on Spaced Out Radio? Our sales department is waiting to hear from you, and we can work around any budget. From commercial spots to banners to special promotions, there are many opportunities to get your name and product out to our SOR listeners. For a price guide and more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. Get your horns up with me on Spaced Out Radio. This is Ron Bumblefoot Thaw. Come tune in to SOR where you can hear me rock out with Little Brother is Watching, the official theme song of Spaced Out Radio. And then come on over to Bumblefoot.com where you can find out about my tour schedule, my music, and everything else. Bumblefoot.com keeps you up to date on what I'm doing and the best way to stay in touch with my music and music camps. Sign up for my newsletter at Bumblefoot.com and remember, Little Brother is Watching. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott. Follow Dave on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Facebook Spaced Out Radio Show. Hour number two of Spaced Out Radio is underway tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Thank you so much for joining us. We welcome back everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates, along with the digital side on Revolution Radio. Remember, you can check out all of our archives at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do old Davey the favor. Hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Obfuscate. Obfuscate is your password. Use it wisely, space travelers, as the clam sets a password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website is spacedoutradio.com. We've got a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Tonight we are talking Mandela Effect because it's one of those little strange phenomena that many people believe Something has changed in our society, while others will say, yeah, you you just didn't remember it correctly. Breaking it all down is Callie, as she is a researcher into this. And Callie, we really appreciate it. I forgot to mention your YouTube channel. Give it a shout out, if you don't mind. All right. uh, You guys can follow me on YouTube. Uh, My username is uh, Society's Rejects. And uh, you guys can follow me on Twitter as well, at SexyGamer. Well, perfect. Perfect. We appreciate that. And she is from Saskatchewan, so make sure you all wave because she will be able to see you. <laughs> it's nice and flat. Waving there. back, guys. Yes. Hey, I got to ask you a question. In regards sure. to Mandela Effect, do we have any examples from music? Oh, my gosh. That is a really, 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 really great, great topic with the Mandela Effect. So there's something called a flip flop. And there's been so many things going on with music, but one of the things that has been happening that makes people think that, you know, we're flip-flopping back and forth in between different timelines. There's been a dimensional rift, like a rift, you know, and that Queen song, We Are the Champions. You familiar with that one? Yes. Okay. How does that song end? It ends. It ends. We are the champions, but on recording, Freddie Mercury never said of the world, but live he did. You know that's strange because I had the studio recordings of Jock Rock, and I think that was track number two, and I played it to death. And myself and a lot of other people remember of the world at the end. Yeah, um, I know. Yeah. I know on the on the actual album. Yeah, because I checked into this one because I thought the same thing, <laughs> and uh, and I just I remember hearing it on a live album. I think they were playing it, you know, 
in, somewhere in England. And at the end, he said, of the world. So I've heard both. But on the recordings, I don't think it was there. You know, that's different for everybody. For me, it was definitely there. A lot of people say the same thing. Um, another one is in Michael Jackson's Thriller. So at the beginning of the video, you know, like that iconic video for Thriller? Yes. Um, Scared the daylights out of me as a kid. Oh, it's wild, dude. It, I mean, it's a great video. It's classic. And at, like, the beginning of the video, there's, like, a new word in there that some people just don't remember. And that video, uh, the word is y'all. So in the beginning, the, like, the announcer guy who's introducing the video says the word y'all. A lot of people don't remember it. I don't recall that at all. It's a weird word for that time period, right? And especially for, you know, his his background and everything. It's it's just weird. I that is something I will have to check out. I really do not recall that. It's yeah, that. it's it's super strange. And and one of the weird things with this, like I said, are the flip flops. Because we can um we can get into music a little bit more, like um, Jules' uh, video, like "Who Will Save Your Soul." Um, in in the video, has actually changed to "Soul," so that makes it a lot more creepy. Who will save your soul? Ah! Oh yeah, yeah, that one, that one's a little strange because I always thought it was "Soul." All right, like, all right. So we, we don't we this. don't have multiple souls, Drew, uh, Jewel. Like, come on here. What are you trying to do? Yeah, it's like talking about everybody. I mean, I look at it almost like a threat. It freaks me out. I got goosebumps, dude. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I pulled up um, the Michael Jackson thriller uh, video 1983 lyrics. Here's the narration. Darkness falls across the land. The midnight hour is close at hand. Creatures crawl in search of blood to terrorize y'all's neighborhood. <laughs> I never knew that lyric was in there. Yeah, it's super, super strange. Just really weird. Completely. Um, yeah, and you know, there have been um gosh, might have to call in the, the, the chat on uh Space Out Radio Online here. Um here's a really good one. Um Sweet Dreams Are Made of Blank. <laughs> This. Okay, so for me, it was these. And it was, sweet dreams are made of these, you know? And what was interesting is when this Mandela effect came out, it was still bees in the Marilyn Manson video. And then about, like, six months to a year later, it also changed to this. So the Marilyn Manson video actually used to be what was called residue. For this. Okay, define this residue for people who may not understand. Okay, so residue is something that is evidence of the way that something was before. So like um, Ed McMahon saying he works for Publishers Clearinghouse, or um, James Earl Jones um, saying that it was Luke, I am your father. And um, the same thing with several other actors from uh, Star Wars call out like the iconic Luke, I am your father. When in reality, that was never said. It was just, no, I am your father. Um, other residue includes, uh, there's a lot of maps out there that have a place uh, visible still called Arctica. But all current maps, for the most part, with the exception of a very few and uh, some children's books, um, don't have a North Pole. So where did Santa live? Well, of course there's a North Pole. That's scientifically well, proven. Well, here's what's interesting. Um, you know Antarctica? Yes. Okay, well, having an Antarctica infers that there's an Arctica. Well, an Arctic. Right, but when I was a child, um, I had like a a lot of scientists in my family and my aunt's friend actually um, 
they went out on an exhibit or ex excavation uh they went out to the north pole to take soil samples and in my memory there was a continent there but now there's not and they're saying that santa either lives in svalbard which is a new place to me and a lot of people or uh santa lives in alaska when he's canadian the north pole is in canada most of it just saying (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it, you know, people We're making remember claim to that. Yeah, you know what? We own Santa. Deal with it. Exactly. Um, exactly. <laughs> um, Fruit of the Loom underwear. Um, do you remember what was behind the pile of fruit on your little underwear tag? I'm gonna not going to lie. I never really looked that closely. Okay. Well, you know what? My, I, my parents always bought me Fruit of the Loom underwear when I was a little kid. And I always thought, what is this weird thing? It's a cornucopia. There was like this, basically right. the things that you have at Thanksgiving. Yeah. But now there is no evidence that there was a cornucopia behind the fruit on the Fruit of the Loom logo. But tons of other people remember it. Now that is strange. That is, okay, so... Now that you mention that, I, you know, I feel I remember that, you know, because something was holding on to the fruit. Yes, exactly. The, the cornucopia, the fruit was kind of spilling out of it. It was like this, uh, like almost like taupe, um, kind of like a creamish orange color in the background. And now there's just a pile of fruit. Very strange. That one intrigues me. That one intrigues me. Cornucopia yeah, there. I I should check my I should check I'm a Haynes guy. So I you know I, damn you know fruit of the loom stuff. I, I just never paid attention to it. So are you a Monty Python fan? Um not the biggest one. If it's on I'll watch it. Okay. But I never, remember... I never jumped in. I never really jumped into the entire, you know. I, I, yeah, I never really jumped into it uh, as deep as uh, other people did. All right. Well, there's this video with uh, Carl Sagan, and uh, he's teaching uh, a school, uh, like classroom, um, and he's got like this image of the galaxy up, and he's pointing at like. Uh, the galaxy and he's showing the milky way and he points to an outer spiral arm and he says you know this is where we're located on the outside you know right here and a lot of us have a memory of uh the earth being located in the sagittarius arm carl sagan remembers it um and there's a video of him stating that um neil degrasse tyson states that we're located in the sagittarius arm and this is somebody who doesn't believe in the Mandela effect, but there's videos of him saying that we are located in the Sagittarius arm of the sky. And the Monty Python Galaxy song um, says that we're living in an outer spiral arm. And that's in the song. So there's the residue for that. But apparently now we're living in closer to the middle of the Milky Way. Very weird. Some of these I just don't know how to respond to. I'm not trying to be silent and rude here. I'm just trying to figure some of these out because it it's uh, it's looking very very intriguing when it comes to this entire topic. You know, it, it's mind blowing, and there have been a lot of people who just completely they were convinced this was false memory, and eventually one just hits them and they don't go back. They say, you know what? I'm not affected by these other ones. In fact, there's a channel um, that I listen to quite often. And that's uh, the real news online with Brian Stavely. And he's got an entire series. And I mean, a series of videos that are so interesting. Um, he, I believe he was going through a drive through with his boss and they looked up at this sign and the name of their town had changed. And, 
they kind of look at each other and go, what? So he spent the next couple months calling every single organization in the neighborhood, talking to Uber drivers and asking them the name of the location where they, they were located. And um, they all said the name that the town was before. Nobody had taken the update. He even got them on the line, like recordings of it saying, well, go outside, look at the sign and tell me what it says. And he's got all these just audio files of these people being completely dumbfounded. Uber drivers, everybody. And how long ago was this? Um, this was a couple years ago, I believe. I, I can look it up exactly, but he's got all the files there. He's got a great um, Mandela effect shortlist where all this residue stuff he goes through and he shows all the evidence for the different stuff. Like, um, here's a good one. Um, I believe it was, was it Everybody Loves Raymond? It might have been Golden Girls, you know, old ladies, gray hair. But they've got um, a clip of her answering the phone. And sitcoms really help with, like, just exposing some of these truths. And she answers the phone. And I believe someone was prank calling her, but her response was, oh, Ed McMahon has a big check for me? I won? I won the million dollars? Wow. And, you know, then there's, like, um, one of the other highly affected ones, coincidentally, the Truman Show is associated with this, you know, and a bunch of other really interesting um, movies that have to do with these weird, uh, you know, esoteric subjects. But um, they've got, uh, what is it, a Jim Carrey saying, you know, um, talking about uh, the Monopoly man having a monocle and coming in, you know, doing like the parody of the Monopoly guy with a monocle, which he never had one. And, right. you know, it goes... It goes even deeper. They've got professional uh, wrestlers referring to other wrestlers. And he goes, oh, man, you uh, you came in here. You were so rolling in money from selling those T-shirts that, you know, you came in like the Monopoly man. You got a top hat and a monocle. And why would they say that? I just think we always thought he did. I got a question uh, coming from one of our chat rooms here from, oh, okay. Does false memory have such detail of situation and emotion? You know, that's a really interesting question. And I have to be completely open here. Um, like I brought up earlier, they have successfully replaced memories in animals. And if it wasn't for the residue, I, I would say, I don't know, right? Because if, you know, if memory can be replaced in animals over six years ago and they have medical journals on it, how would I know somebody isn't changing my memory? I don't know about the conspiracy technology or what's public, but the fact is, is you can find residue. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is go to the thrift store and just, you know, code through old books and old magazines and anything I can. And, and you do find residue or, you know, watch 80s TV shows and you'll find things and people referring to things that just don't exist. And, you know, oh. those of us who... Go ahead. Go ahead. Those of us who are affected by this really do have super strong emotions related to this stuff. Like I talked about earlier with, like, you know, my husband's name being Scott. Beam Me Up Scotty was a big thing for us. I mean, he owned a Star Wars collectible store. That was huge. We were constantly screaming, Luke, I am your father, at each other. I went to conventions, like I would go to, you know, Phoenix Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con, and we did the circuit. I went to PAX, and that was just a common thing you would do. People would dress up, and they would scream, Luke, I am your father. Like, you know, you, you have emotions about this stuff. It's your life. You have these memories. It, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know really how to even respond to that, because... I don't know if they're just screenshots or we've or we've heard it before, right? I, well, like I don't know. This is this is my confusion on the topic. I mean, do, there's things out there that I find incredibly strange, all right, and yet there are topics out there that I just went, you know, like give me an example, Joe, uh, who's been listening to this show for almost five years. You know, he just went on on Google, pulled up the fruit of the loom. And the first thing he sh it shows is the cornucopia being there. And that's residue. You know, it's residue. Yeah. So the residue 
is stuff that people um, have either found evidence of or is reproduced. But if you go to Logopedia um, and you look up Fruit of the Loom, unless it's flip-flopped, you should see that there never was a cornucopia. But, like, the evidence is there for you to find, and, and you can find it in tangible reality. Uh, you can, you know, you can go through your books. Like, uh, for example, a lot of people remember South America being more underneath North America, but now um, the edge of South America is actually touching Florida, and the direction of the Panama Canal has changed. And, it, you know, it's also almost into the ocean. It is um, very weird. That one I, I do recall, because on the old maps, like when I was in school, not that I'm ancient or anything, I mean, I'm not as old as uh, some of our <laughs> listeners, you know, but I do recall on the maps that South America was more like, or or the entire North America, South America was kind of almost like a like a straight line, almost, almost all the way down from, from, you know, British Columbia straight down to Chile. Yeah, and there's some other weird stuff about the maps. I don't remember, you know, um, I remember Kamloops was on the mainland. A lot of people don't remember that, but in my memory, it was. And Vancouver Island wasn't cut out into the States. It was actually higher on the coast, and, you know, you took the ferry. I, I've been there a bunch of times, and, you know, I don't, I remember you could take, you know, a couple-hour ferry from Seattle, but I don't remember, you know, basically Vancouver Island cutting into the U S um, uh, there's some other uh, geographic changes like Arctica no longer being there, no ice cap on the North pole. It's vanished from Google maps. Um, very strange stuff. Um, a lot of people remember this place, but for me, um, Madagascar was only in Disney movies and, you know, not a lot of people agree with that one, but for me, you know, Madagascar was not, not a real place. Uh, Australia, the shape of it has uh, changed. Um, even uh, Italy is, you know, looking less like a boot and more of a high heel. So there's new locations on the map like Svalbard and new islands showing up. Cuba, I used to have a friend that lived there. It was quite a small place. Those islands are just growing and growing and growing. And the shape of the continents are changing. And there was prophecy about this. There is a prophecy about this in the Bible. It said that, you know, mountains would be thrown into the seas, the seas would disappear. And, you know, I'm not a huge, like, I, you know, I haven't been religious. I've been a truther. I've been, you know, an alien conspiracy theorist most of my life. You know, just very oh, we love, we love some good aliens around here. You know, I've been to the alien conventions. You know, I, I met George Norrie. You know, um, I'm, I'm buddies with Mike Barra. Uh, Space on Mars. If you guys haven't checked that out, it's a great book. And um, yeah, you know that's that's where most of my interest lied until this Mandela effect thing happened. And and now it's just sitting back and just watching reality change and going, what's next? Oh yes, George Nori, best mustache in radio, right there. <laughs> best mustache in radio. And on that note, we are going to take a break here at the bottom of the hour. Mandela Effect Talk continues with Callie right after this on Spaced Out Radio. Are you convinced that there's been some sort of shift? We'll have to see as we continue right after this on the Mighty SOR. Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience has proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. So for more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. 
You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is watching. Hey, everybody. The SOR Space Travelers is open. For just five bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. Hey, space travelers. This is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you'd know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and balms are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. You can check us out on our website, MightyMooseBeard.com. Hello, space travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month and follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye. At SpacedOutRadio.com, we are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at SpacedOutRadio.com today. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. If you like it hot, real hot then heat up your meals with bumblefoot hot sauce get your bumblefoot hot sauce today the sauce bumblelicious and the four million scoville unit bumble we're going in hot real hot coming out even hotter keep the milk nearby and tantalize your taste buds tonight bumblefoot hot sauce available now at kajans.com we're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. Need that weekend supernatural fix? Look no further than Spaced Out Saturday right here at spacedoutradio.com. I'm Stacy Edwards. And I'm John Edwards. Each Saturday night, Stacy and I are going to bring you the best in paranormal, cryptids, UFOs, you name it, and we're going there. It's all about the experience and to share the knowledge with all of you. So tune us in every Saturday night on Spaced Out Saturdays starting at 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, only at spacedoutradio.com. Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? 
At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes. It's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and balms are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. Check us out. We pass the halfway point of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Oh, sometimes comments crack me up. Oh, thank you, Barther, on our YouTube chat. He got me. He said he was going to get me. He got me. Anyways, I want to remind all of you that if you've missed portions of this show or others, you can check out our free archives at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do old Davy the favor. Hit that subscribe button. Our website is spaced out radio.com where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and doing a little shopping and reading at the SOR Newswire. Tonight we're talking Mandela Effect. Researcher, YouTuber, Callie is with us tonight going through all of this. Callie, welcome back. All right. Uh, what about those uh, Space Out Radio t-shirts? We got aliens? Is that right? Oh, we, oh yeah. You got aliens. You got aliens. That's, that's, where, that's, that's, that's the perfect thing, man. You got aliens. It, it all works for me. It all, all works for me. Oh, the, you know what? You know when you get your, your regulars who have been uh, around for a while in the chat rooms and, and they just say things just to make you laugh sometimes? That's what I'm having right now. That's what I'm, Oh, my gosh. Oh, sometimes. <laughs> oh, they're making though, me right? lose it tonight. To, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Because this stuff is serious. You know, it's, it's real. Yeah. It's, it's wild, dude. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, what do you what do you think? Did Mandela effect have anything to do with aliens? You know what? I've noticed that the percentage of people having experiences with aliens has been huge. And as somebody who follows the you know the Palladian channeling and um, all that stuff like that, um, different um, people that channel um, messages from Doctrine Council and all this stuff, light beings, star seeds, um, the High Council of Seven. They called this well before it was going to happen. They called, you know, actually scary stuff, dude. I've got goosebumps. They called, you know, uh, a shift into a different uh, resonant frequency, um, timelines, parallel realities, ascension, and even ascension symptoms that a lot of people are having, like ringing in the ears, deja vu. And, and people think it's associated with this whole Mandela effect thing. And, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know what to think. I, you know, things have changed Really? So with, with that, with that, well, I got to stop reading the chat room right now. I have to. Well, let's I get, have to. Yeah, go ahead. Let's get into some anatomy changes here. Okay, let's do that. All right. So this one, people have been taking the update. And, you know, I was one of those little goth kids, you know. I would, right. you know sit in my room. I had a mohawk. I had like, you know, the nose ring. I had, I worked in a piercing shop, you know, I was this little rebel. And, you know, I was really like kind of moody and goth. And, you know, starting really young, I would draw like pictures of this skeleton in, you know, the classroom, you know, how they would, we didn't have an actual skeleton, but we had a cutout of them on the wall. And, you know, I'd draw it over and over and over again. And I would read, like, medical textbooks, all that kind of stuff. I was really fascinated with it. I was told um, by my art teacher it would make me a better artist. And um, I'm going to ask you, where is the heart located in your body? I'm going to ask the chat as well. Uh, isn't, it, 
isn't it sort of center l- on the left side, center left? All right. So there's a lot of residue for this one, especially art. The heart has been inching from the left side into the center. It's grown in size. It has more intakes and outtakes. And now it is nearly, it, it's kind of the bottom of it is kind of pointed to the left, but it's basically completely in the center of the chest now. And, you know, you know, in movies where like somebody has a heart attack. Yes. Okay. Well, if you watch like, you know, movies from the eighties and like, you know, the nineties, if somebody's like having a heart attack or pretending that they have a heart attack, they grab their shirt on the left side and they put their hands over their heart. And it's because, you know, the heart was on the left side, but now the heart is, you know, it's a lot bigger. It's like upgraded. So this is the first of the physical effects I'm going to talk about. But what's really interesting about this is it's like our bodies are getting upgraded. They're stronger. They're, you know, they're more advanced. They're hardier. And that to me is super fascinating. So you're saying that the heart moved over? Yes, it moved in, to the in, center in of the all chest. Of, Okay, in all of us? Everybody. And, you know, there's some really good videos if somebody wants to do their um, research on this. You can look it up. There's several nurses that didn't take the update. That's what it's called. You know, if somebody doesn't, if you're in an industry and you don't remember, you know, like the new way, you, you remember the way it was before, um, that's considered not taking the update. And a lot of people say that if you're really like involved in an industry, that you'll get the new information so you don't mess up. But there are nurses that um, did interviews and have photos and all this stuff of the way that physiology used to be, and they're shocked by it. Really? Yeah, and, you know, there's more, too. About, I think it was, was it two years ago or a year ago? I'm going to have to look this up. But um, Time Magazine and some other major players came out with – an article about two new organs found in the human body. And they were just stating, you know what? We just, we never saw them before. Oops. There's, you know, there's two new organs. And (laughs) that was on March uh, 28th, 2018, the independent.co.uk news in the health section said the interstitium is a new organ discovered in the human body. Um, that was only one of two around the same time. And um, uh, the new organ, they say, on uh, was hiding in uh, plain sight. And that wasn't the only new organ that they had found around that time. Um, they found, uh, I believe, the illidium, the interstitium. I've, don't, you know, don't, uh, don't get too upset if I'm not pronouncing uh, this one right. And then there was a third. Uh, was that one again? It, the third one is like a, a moving organ that um, travels uh, throughout your body underneath uh, the skin that they said was silica based, basically like sil- like almost like a silicone. And apparently its purpose is to move tumors throughout the tissue that kind of melts anything it, it travels through on its path. And this was found in Time Magazine, The Independent, um, National Geographic, Popular Science. And it had a lot of us just shaking our heads and dropping our jaw. CNN.com. New organ to be the biggest in your body. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, this obviously got the name Mandela effect from Nelson Mandela, who many people believe passed away in the 90s while still in jail. But on our timeline, really didn't didn't pass until 2013. How does this so affect what do you remember? What do I remember him? You know, I remember him being in jail. I remember when apartheid collapsed, thank goodness, down in South Africa, that he was released and then he won the election. That's what I believe. Interesting. See, I, you know what? I wasn't really into American politics at the time, so that wasn't in the forefront for me. I was... You know, it's more well, like... Well, it was I South Africa. Not a, yeah. I, I got to correct you there. Well, it was... It was South Africa. Well, no. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, 
it was like it was something that was like you know completely you're 100 right but i wasn't into politics anywhere and i think it was a big deal what was going on there with the americans because you know they were really getting involved like a lot of things i didn't hear about until i went to the states and maybe that's because you know our news is more positive here we got a lot more fluff stories on the news here than we do in the states um you know it's 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 really strange. You know, I don't know pretty much anything about world news at the time. I'm just going to come completely clean. Uh, but I I can I can tell you this that a lot of people are affected by it, and okay. um, they're they're shocked. And another one that goes along the lines of that is the the tank man. You know, that's, I remember that's him in China. I remember him getting run over, but now he crawls over the tank. So that's see i i recall him getting whisked off that he stopped the tank all right and then he got whisked off and there's actually been documentaries about this gentleman because nobody knows what happened to him now we can all surmise you know, it- we can all surmise what happened to him considering that the local co- communist government really doesn't like that kind of stuff when people try to think for themselves. You know, there's some scary stuff recently yeah. with the coronavirus where people were reporting on it down in Wuhan and they had videos of, you know, the government coming and knocking on their door and telling them to go online, say sorry. And then a few days later they vanish. And that's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, that's where things get a little bit scary. A little bit scary. I got a question coming in from Chris for you. And okay. let me just scroll. He is asking, have you found any changes to logic and math with the Mandela effect? Yes. So I forget which number exactly, but pi was like 314, 159, 265. And somewhere in between number like 13 and 20, one of the numbers had changed. And I had it written on the wall at uh, the property I had sold. And then I, you know, I wrote it on the wall because I noticed things were changing. And I'm like, what's next? Is pie going to (laughs) change? And, you know, I really wish I would have brought that with me. But um, did did pie change? It did. Um, I'm sure you can find residue on that one. Yeah. Pie is the best food. Um, Another one with mathematics that people are talking about, we covered earlier, which had to do with um, da Vinci's work, where um, the Vitruvian man used to follow um, specific, um, like, uh, proportions for the rules of movement. So he had three arms on each side, one going up and one going down to show the movement up and down and how it created um, this perfect geometry. But now um, the Vitruvian man only has uh, two arms on each side. Strange. I thought he had four. Really? I haven't heard that one. Well, no, yeah, he has four now. And a lot of people remember six because it was to show movement both up and down. So three on each side. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, If we can go back into anatomy changes... Um, okay, let's do that. What 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 is behind your eyeball? Skin, flesh, and then what's behind veins, that? You've got like okay, brain skeleton, and, then the brain. Okay, so this is a big one for a lot of people, and it's definitely one there's a lot of residue for. A lot of people, when you ask this question, and there's tons of video of people being interviewed about it. Um, they don't remember the occipital bone. So the bone that is behind the, the eyeball, there's a little slit in it, and that's where, you know, all the connectivity to the brain goes. But a lot of us remember completely empty eye sockets. Another thing Makes we sense. remember is, yeah, you know, and I knew somebody whose eyeball popped out when he got <laughs> attacked. And, uh, you know, there's definitely no skull there. And another one is the nose bone. Um, People don't remember it, but apparently now we have a nose bone. 
Uh, the skull is changed. We've got, okay, I'll ask you this question. How many bones are in the human skull? Does that include teeth? It does not include teeth. Oh, well, you have the skull, you have spine, you have the jawbone. Okay, so just from the jawbone up. Jawbone up? So the, you said the skull and the jawbone. Yes. Okay. So what am this I missing? One was a big, this one was a big shift. You are missing 20 more bones. There are eight cranial bones, 14 facial skeleton bones, and there's the occipital bone, two temporal bones, two uh, parietal bones. The, I'm, not even, I'm going to brutalize these words, but there's also uh, frontal bones and then two more as well. So there's 22 bones total. And this is something that was looked at as much of like a skeleton upgrade for people because, you know, when you were a baby, they say, don't touch the soft spot because there were like three different areas that would come fused together. together. Now, yes. Yeah. But now those bones don't completely fuse until you're 35 to 40. They come together in a different fashion. They're incredibly jagged and, and they all come apart. The sutures aren't completely closed until you're in your 30s or 40s. But before, you know, that would become resolved in childhood. But now the skeleton can actually, you know, it has like um, basically tissue that holds it together and the skeleton will come apart into all these different pieces and it can be like laid out on a table. And, you know, the hardiness of the skeleton has changed as well. It's a lot thicker. We're, we're a lot like beefier. Our, our spines have grown almost like three times in width, according to a lot of people. For some of you guys, this might have been always your reality. But for other ones of us, we're just like, wow, you know, there's uh, floating ribs now. Um, the pelvis, a lot of people remember it being all one piece. Um, there was this movie, Shallow Hal, and um, they showed like this um, tailbone deformity where the tailbone came out kind of over his bum crack. And, yes. you know, that's still in the movie. But now uh, the tailbone is called the, the sacrum and uh, the coccyx, coccyx, and it's now part of um, the hip, which now, like, I remember being horrified in school because they would teach us that, um, you know, the hips, they grow in pregnancy like, permanently, but, you know, they don't come apart. So a lot of people die in childbirth, but now the hips are in three parts and there's like um, a, a, some tissue in the front that holds the two hip bones together and tissue in the back that holds it to the sacrum. And when you're pregnant, that like plug of like, you know, it's kind of like a mucus plug of tissue. It actually expands. So pregnancy is a lot safer. And if you look up photos of this, it'll just blow your mind if you're affected. Because a lot of us are just like, what is going on? Well, the whole birth thing, that one kind of trips me out a little bit because that's something I'll never really experience. And if I do, well, <laughs> then, then uh, somebody... Uh, uh, I'm blaming aliens if that happens. Definitely blaming well, aliens if that happens. You know, in the Bible now, it references lactating men, and I'm like you know, in the next thing, next thing you know, you're going to be pregnant. <laughs> Could very well happen. Could very well happen, especially with some of the weird stuff that we talk about here. Some MK Ultra type experience that. You know, we may not want to have happen, but nonetheless, we're continuing on. We got about four and a half minutes here before we got to go to break at the top of the hour. We are talking Mandela effect with Callie tonight, who is a YouTuber and a researcher on this topic. Appreciate you taking the time tonight with this and the fact that there are so many different examples we always seem to get into the basics, whether it's the Berenstain Bears, whether it's Shazam and and all of that. What are we missing here? What are some of the big ones out there that we're just not focusing on? Okay. Um, one of the big ones for us is, you know, like in wrestling, boxing, um, a kidney punch is illegal. Yes. You, you can't punch people in the kidney. So. Where would you say you can't punch? Where would you point the kidneys out? In the lower back region. 
Okay. Well, now if you look up anatomy and just uh, Google that real quick, your kidneys are actually tucked up inside underneath your rib cage. So a kidney punch is actually impossible because they're behind the new uh, ribs and the floating ribs. Very wild. Interesting. Yeah, so there's no way to give a kidney punch now because the kidneys have relocated to a safer location up underneath the the rib cage. I really suggest just Googling that real quick. It's like, whoa, very strange. Um, I I think like, well, it's interesting, right? Because there's some like hints to things, I think. You know, we have like history, right? And if you break that word down, it's his story. And, you know, we're on a planet plan it like almost like it's planned you know and these are the things that I kind of go back to to say you know are we in a computer simulation do we have like really advanced technology in the future um Nick Goldstrom uh talks about an ancestor simulation and he says that in the future in order to challenge yourself you would send yourself back in time which is actually you know your future to experience what it was like for your ancestors and like I brought up earlier, we've experienced things going from Pong to VR. So this reality being an MMORPG is completely feasible. And, you know, it's not what a lot of people lean towards. But, you know, that's, that's the most reasonable explanation to me up until this point. Do you think that there are Mandela effects that are affecting, as we got about 90 seconds, our everyday lives? Never mind the entertainment factor. You know, there hasn't been too much that affects our everyday lives, um, with the exception of our bodies being safer. And another one that affects a lot of people's lives down in L.A. is before they said um, the autonomous cars were 10 years away, and now they're in full force. So that's, you know, something that has upped our safety quite a bit. But other than that, not yet. Um, We'll have to ask the chat. And a quick question here from OOK. What's the argument that this is demonic? Is it demonic? Oh, all right. You know what? There are so many people that say it's demonic, and we can really get into that after the break. Um, the Bible has so many changes and prophecies that literally speak out the Mandela effect directly. And I'm sure it's not the only religion that does so, but it's the one that I'm familiar with. I went to Catholic school. And there are so many people, great channels like EYA on YouTube that talk about this. And I'm really looking forward to getting uh, getting into detail with that after the break. Well, we can do that. We can do that because, well, that's kind of what we do around here. That's kind of what we do. And, uh, you know, I got to say, the Twitter crowd, the YouTube crowd is fantastic tonight. Fantastic tonight. If, if you get a chance to read on in, there is some funny stuff going on on social media tonight as we talk about the Mandela effect with Callie tonight. Yeah, we're having fun. We got hour number three of Spaced Out Radio coming on up right after this. So this is how it breaks down. Callie will be with us until the bottom of the hour. And then she's going to wave good night so everybody around the world can see her wave from Flatlands of Saskatchewan. And we also have the SOR Newswire and the Thought of the Day coming up. Hour number three of Spaced Out Radio is next. The party is always on at the Moose Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is where you want to be when visiting Canada's west coast. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose cranks up the rock while serving some of the best rated food in the city. The menu starts at $6.95. Why party anywhere else in Vancouver when the Moose is right there? Get your horns up and rock with the Moose, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, 
We're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on 24-7 with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. The SOR Vault is open for business, and do we have some cool swag for you to pick up. All you have to do is head over to our website and click on the SOR Vault. You have a variety of cool logos to choose from, and put them on anything you want. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs, you name it, we can get it to you. So do your shopping by supporting the store you love. Get your Spaced Out Radio swag at the SOR Vault today. Hello, everyone. This is Ryan Stacy from the Experiencer Support Association, otherwise known as TESA. We're glad to team up with Spaced Out Radio to help investigate your experiences on the SOR Sightlines Report. Together, we'll investigate the strange sightings and occurrences you've had. We're looking for answers just like you. So fill out a Sightlines Report on the Spaced Out Radio website, and let's figure out what's going on together. space travelers it's me again carl don't forget to join the space travelers club for just five bucks a month and follow spaced out radio on twitter at spaced out radio our instagram dave scott sor our facebook page is spaced out radio show our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio come woo it up with spaced out radio today bye For the price of one cup of coffee a month, you can become an SOR Space Traveler. The Space Travelers Club is a place where you can interact with other listeners, either live during the show or on our great forum. We want your stories, pictures, comments, and ideas. You'll get live video streams, exclusive content, and be a part of our newsletter. Stay in touch with everything SOR. The Space Travelers Club is just 5 bucks a month at spacedoutradio.com. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. Hey everyone, I'm John Edwards. And I'm Stacy Edwards. Together we're taking over Saturday nights on Spaced Out Radio where we're going to bring our own experiences of the paranormal and talk to the best people we can find to help bring you answers to your strange tales. We're here to entertain your need for weekend. Woo! So tune us in at spacedoutradio.com starting at 9.06 Pacific, 12.06 AM Eastern where we can all get a little spooky together. Spaced Out Saturday nights right here at spacedoutradio.com. Hey, space travelers, this is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you would know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. I'm feeling a little spicy tonight. What to do, what to do. Why not get bumble fucked? 
Four million Scoville units of pure hard rock. Bumblefoot hot sauces come in three flavors. The burning bumble f Tone it down a bit with Bumblelicious and throw the sauce on everything. Spice it up. Bumble me, baby. Bumblefoot hot sauce. Get it today at kajans.com. Looking for creative ways to get your company out in the public? How about advertising on Spaced Out Radio? Our sales department is waiting to hear from you, and we can work around any budget. From commercial spots to banners to special promotions, there are many opportunities to get your name and product out to our SOR listeners. For a price guide and more information, please contact us at sales at spaceoutradio.com. We are scouring the world for the most intriguing stories of your day. Take the time to read up on the SOR Newswire, where our team, led by Captain Shirk, will deliver to you some of the best paranormal and supernatural news, along with some stories that will blow your mind from the weird to the wacky. It's the news outside the news that piques interest, and that's what we're looking to deliver to you. The SOR Newswire, only at spacedoutradio.com. Looking for something new to push your limits? Look Beyond the Spectrum, a new docuseries featuring some of the best researchers in the world when it comes to everything from UFOs, government cover-ups, and Bigfoot in the forest. Truth seekers like Steve Bassett, Dr. Jeff Meldrum, Richard Dolan, as well as others all chip in to bring their knowledge to you. Beyond the Spectrum can be found on Amazon. Would you like to connect with us? Head to spacedoutradio.com for all your latest show info. Now, back to Dave Scott and SOR. Welcome back to the third and final hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Appreciate you all tuning us on in, especially if you are listening to us on our terrestrial affiliates as well as our digital side on Revolution Radio. Great to have you with us. Remember, you can check out all of our archives for free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do old Davey the favor. Hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Obfuscate. Obfuscate is your password. Use it wisely, space travelers, as the clam sets a password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website is spacedoutradio.com. we got a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire, which is updated daily. Tonight, we've been talking the Mandela Effect all night long. Researcher, blogger, YouTuber, Callie is with us. Yes, we're glad to have her here. It's been a fun show in everything that we do tonight and everything that we are chatting about. Great to have you here, Callie. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you for having me. Having a great time. And if you want to follow her on YouTube, Society's Rejects is her channel name. i got to ask you, there's a lot of people who have made comments in our chat rooms tonight about people who are allegedly dead at one point. But are still alive, you know. And oh, Joe, boy. Joe brought up a good one with Kirk Douglas, where he said he recalls a number of years ago that Kirk Douglas uh, was. He said about fifteen years ago, the Academy Awards did a memorial for Kirk Douglas, who had just died. Surprise, surprise! He just died this year. I believe he was like one hundred and three years old. What's your thoughts on some of this? You know, I think it's really interesting, and I think it's kind of like a hint, you know, maybe from the other realm that uh, life might not be as impermanent as we thought. You know, if if people can uh, die and come back again, there's been a lot of um, of people who have died and, and come back. I mean, there's been name changes. Um, Sally Fields is now known as Sally Fields. Um We've had uh, the the Christian preacher Joel uh, Olstein is now known as Joel Olstein, Osteen, no L. And you know we have these um, name changes. We've got like these deaths, and people are coming back to life. And 
and you know, to me, it really makes me wonder about the the nature of reality because there are so many examples of uh, these deaths and um, non deaths. I mean, um, Bill Nye, the the science guy, you know, in my reality, he died, and now you know he's back. He's doing interviews with uh, you know uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson and all these other people, and I'm like, man, I remember all my nerdy friends on the internet posting memorials on Facebook and now he's not dead anymore. Like, what does it mean? I don't know. That I don't know. I never heard the Bill Nye one. Yeah, he was dead for me. I was like, well, (laughs) okay. So that, that brings up because, because there is, you know, there is an age gap between you and me. All right. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm only like 30 years old and, you know, I no, I'm kidding. I'm 46 and, you know, you're much, much younger than me and definitely I, I yeah. prettier. You're definitely prettier than me uh, as well. No, and no, it's true. It's true. I'm a solid uh, five point. I'm a solid 5.3 out of 10. I've already <laughs> ranked myself. Yeah. Anyways, no, that, that, it, the hair bump it's the aliens thing. Sure. It, it's the alien th- thing. You know what I'm saying? But nonetheless, the point that I'm getting at is, is this generational where my generation or the generation that is older than me is going to remember things differently than a younger generation such as yours or below where maybe you've been affected more by any potential Mandela effect? You know, that's a real interesting question. And I was hoping that, you know, people around my age or younger, I'm only 11 years younger than you are. So, you know, it's not that big of a difference, but um, there would be like, you know, but it's it's all over the map. It really is. And um, there's some actually very famous people who are Mandela affected. Um, Let's see. Uh, Tana Montague, um, Shane Dawson. They're huge YouTubers, like, you know, YouTubers basically with mansions. And they both do videos on the Mandela effect. And, you know, they they post it and, you know, they're affected completely. And a good example of a a flip flop um, was Shane Dawson. And I forget how many followers Shane Dawson has. I'll look it up for you really quick. But I think Shane Dawson is is way, way up there. He's 32.2 million subscribers and he does mandela effect videos and he gets a lot and a lot of slack for it but he cannot help it he still does the videos on the mandela effect and i believe he covered um one that affected a lot of us and that is a notorious flip-flop and that was um uh, houston we have a problem and you can find a lot of posts on this it had switched to houston we've had a problem and now it switched back. So there's so many weird Mandela effects like that, where it's like inferring something or it's kind of creepy. Like, you know, Houston, we've had a problem and, you know, now we don't have one or, you know, one that's not a flip flop. That's really famous with uh, Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks is highly affected. And, you know, it's weird because he's in a lot of conspiracy stuff right now, dude. He's, um, he's got the coronavirus and he's posting pictures of his Corona typewriter, all sorts of weird stuff. His wife made her phone number public, all sorts of strange stuff. And the one that really gets most people is is the famous quote of him sitting on the bench. And I'm going to ask you what it is. He's sitting on the bench. He's got the chocolates in his hand. And, you know, he looks over at the person next to him. And what does he say? Mama always said. Life is a box of chocolates. Yeah, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Now, I've got goosebumps right now, Dave. I'm not going to lie to you. Seriously, Dave, because they're like cutting through my skin. Because this is one of those ones that I'm like, is there some kind of secret message in this? Is there some kind of code to all this? Because I told you earlier that like, you know, Curious George's tale that has the AI changed, right? It has AI in the middle of it. And then there's Bernstein. That's AI, artificial intelligence, right? In in the Bible, son of God changed to son of man. And what's the son of man but artificial intelligence? You know, that's, you know, what we created. So now the Tom Hanks quote is life 
was like a box of chocolates. So do we know what we're going to get now? What is he inferring? That I do not know. Mm. That one I do not know. You know, it doesn't sound right. And if somebody is not Mandela affected and you ask them what that quote is, I, I have never, ever heard. And I've gone into malls and I've interviewed people, you know, took my camera in there. I've never heard somebody say life was like a box of chocolates. But sure enough, that's what the movies say. Get your VHSs, you know, from, from back in the 90s. Grab your VHSs, pop them in. They're all going to be affected. They're all going to say life was like a box of chocolates. Interesting. Yeah, that one I think uh, many of us are familiar with. But back to people dying and, and coming back, there, you know, one of the conspiracies regarding this is, is something to do with JFK Jr. as well. Ooh. Um, can you fill me in on that one? I can't say that I'm, I'm too I, I'm not. On that I'm one. not very familiar with it, but people are saying that he never really died in the plane crash and that uh, he is kind of, you know, around still i don't buy that one i really okay, do well, not let's, buy let's, let's look it up um he died in um 1999 on july 16th according to wikipedia uh caused yes. a death plane crash so that would be a conspiracy theory probably and not a mandela effect unless it's flip-flopped that one's hard to know i don't buy that one i i you know? All right. All right. Well, the, the current reality is that he died in a plane crash. What was it before? I don't know. You know, I'm not, I'm not too familiar. No, he with died that, in but... a plane crash. All right. <clears throat> for us, he did, but you know, it's different for everybody. For other people, he might not have, you know, that might be like, that might be a real mind bender for them. Could be, could be. So when it, I, I'm curious in, in regards to the Mandela effect, a lot of people out there also believe that, you know, never mind the timelines being screwed up, but, but do we look at the Mandela effect as something that, you know, we have skipped over to a new timeline? Is, is, is that the way it is? Because right off the top of the show, you kind of got into a little bit with CERN or a little bit with, with uh, other things that, that may be causing these ripple effects. What's your conclusion? What are you basing the, all of this on? Okay, so this is different for everybody, right? Um, many people are saying right now, because it's very interesting to me that this was, it said in the Bible that all things would change. It said that there would be a new heaven and a new earth. It said the earth would be moved from its place. And we just talked about how we moved from the Sagittarius to Orion, um, the location of the earth. Um, Carl Sagan, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson backs that up. You know, there's a lot of residue. Um, the sky doesn't, you know, that seems less stars more than more. So, you know, you look up, it doesn't look like we moved to the middle of the, you know, the Milky Way, but um, you know, a lot of people are saying, like, like they asked in the chat, a lot of people are saying this is demonic. Other people are 100% convinced that this is CERN. To me, a particle accelerator causing something like this does not make any sense. But they do, like, they do kind of troll you. I mean, there's a lot of conspiracies about that. They're pretty pervasive. It's almost like they want you to think it's them. They, they have, like, those occult events, um, like, with the opening of CERN with, like, you know, um, like I said, like Baphomet, which was um, very, um, what was it, the Bohemian Grove, um, like, you know, these New World Order conspiracies, the Bilderberg Group, the Illuminati, it all links back to CERN. And then Sally, Sally Fields is associated, but, you know, to my knowledge, she's not even Sally Fields anymore. She's Sally Fields. So a lot of people are looking towards that. Like I said, according to, as far as they know, the, the scientific consensus, and we're talking about MIT, we're talking about all these main universities, Cambridge, all of them are saying that these D-Wave computers, including the inventor of the D-Wave computer, which I believe is a fellow Canadian, are saying that we are borrowing resources from parallel reality. Now, a lot of this stuff started around the same time that those D-Wave computers got switched on. So a big theory here is that 
when these D-Wave computers got switched on and were doing these amazing calculations, and these D-Wave computers are fantastic. Um, kind of off topic, but we actually reached something called quantum supremacy, which means okay, that, what's that Google did a calculation that would have taken the fastest supercomputer in the world 10,000 years. I believe they did it within minutes. And, and that's what these quantum computers can do. But they run basically on like a qubit system. So instead of just off or on, they kind of work like, um, I, I don't know if you're aware of like Schrodinger's cat. H- have you heard of that thought experiment? No, fill us in. Okay. So with Schrodinger's cat, Schrodinger thought, you know, quantum physics is ridiculous. He thought it was a joke, so he tried to prove it wrong. And what he did was he said, okay, so you have a vial of poison gas, and you throw it in a box with a cat. Not so nice to the cat. It has a 50% chance of going off. And, you know, according to this, the cat is either alive or dead until you open the box, and it solidifies the possibility of if the cat is dead or alive. Okay. So the cat isn't dead or alive until you open the box. How this lines up with the double slit experiment is um, that one, okay, so they found out that if um, a particle is being, like, thrown towards a wall and there's two slits in the wall, that if this experiment is being observed, like, measured with a laser, the, the particles will act in a very predictable way. They will make two lines on the back wall, you know, like you would expect. Like, you know, you, know, you throw... Right a baseball, it's going to go where you throw it, right? But it it, it didn't work that way. When they stopped observing the experiment and they didn't have an observer, it actually created an interference pattern, which created like, you know, a wave. So they said either the particle went through one or the other or both. So they tried to trick the experiment and they measured it after it had already decided, found it as a realm of possibilities. And then what the experiment did is basically they found that time was changing, like the past was changing, and it went back, corrected the interference pattern, and turned it back into two lines once it was observed and changed the past that that had ever happened. And right. now here's where things get really interesting. Like I mentioned earlier with 9-11, that the random number generators were affected by that event. So many people were thinking on one thing. And a lot of people do believe in the power of prayer and meditation. They do. I mean, it's huge. And we found out from that that, you know, the mind can affect matter. So down in um, somewhere around Phoenix, Arizona, a university decided to set up um, one of these double slit experiments and, you know, have people think about the experiment and see if they can affect, um, you know, the experiment. And have, you know, it collapse into superposition and act in a predictable way like somebody is watching it or a measuring device, right? And they found that yes. And they decided to do a worldwide experiment to find, you know, does distance matter in this? And they set it up online. And they had um, people, volunteers, come online and fill in some basic information about themselves. Do they meditate, you know? just basic information um, about their habits and their lifestyle. And they found out that people who meditate and who are like yoga practitioners or, you know, have the power of prayer actually collapse the wave function into superposition, like into a definite, um, just like it was being observed by a measuring device at a much higher percentage than the average person. But overall, regardless of who is observing the test, um, the differentiation between if it is or is not being observed is, 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 is marked. There, there is a difference there. So your mind does affect the matrix. But these, you know, this isn't wishy-washy stuff. This isn't conspiracy theory stuff. It's none of the stuff that we go to on these channels. This is public science from accredited universities. We've so, got about... F- 
We've got about uh, four, just under four minutes left with you tonight on Spaced Out Radio on a show that has flown on by. Do we expect more of this to continue and for more of this to to really start to see the effects of what we are doing? You know what? It's, it's been amping up. And in the prophecies, like um, bring up the Bible a lot, but it's highly affected. It says all things will be changed. Um, it said, you know, there's going to be a new earth. So if we look at stuff like that and some of the other, like uh, the, I believe the Emerald Tablets, all that stuff mentioned this. So it's been, you know, affected on a, a daily basis, a weekly basis. Um, the Schumann resonance has uh, used to be always at a solid 7.8 hertz, never changed, is now reaching over 100. So a lot of people think the shiftiness has something to do with the Schumann resonance. You can definitely look into that. But there is absolutely no indication of this slowing down. It's, it's been ramping up. It changes by the week. It changes by the shift. And more and more are uh, being affected. But like it said in the Bible, the older things will not be remembered. So a lot of people, you know, maybe, that, you know, maybe it's true. I can just say that, you know, it kind of took my breath away because I never believed in that stuff. But now that I'm seeing it happen, I'm kind of like, wow, you know, maybe this is a hint. And I think there probably are hints everywhere in all prophecies, all religions, and we just have to look for them. If you find any, let me know. <laughs> well, I mean, there's plenty of them. I mean, you look at uh, a lot of business logos. You look at a lot oh my God. of business logos. And, you know, they've changed Home Depot. Staples has that little hook, Home Depot versus the Home Depot. Kit Kat doesn't have a dash in it. I, I mean, it's, it's endless, um, you know, and then celebrities like uh, Robin Williams' death, apparently, Keith Ledger, Mr. Rogers, um, you can look any of those up. Apparently, Michael Jackson, 2009 versus 2014, like Febreze, we've got uh, Chick-fil-A. You probably don't recognize that, but for people in the States, it, it was C-H-I-C. I always felt it wrong, but now it's spelt like a baby chicken. I mean, there's so, so much. You know, we can hardly get into it in a couple hours. But thank you so much for uh, diving deep with me tonight. Oh, it's a, you know what? It's been a lot of fun. I'm still uh, trying to figure out. I don't, I don't buy, buy the Flintstones one. I don't buy the Flintstones one because it's always it has never been F-L-I-N-S. It's always been F-L-I-N-T-S. Do you think, you know, as, as we start to wrap this up, as we only got about a minute left, do you think that some of these are just people taking the imagination to the next level? You know what? For With the residue, I really don't think it's imagination. But I think that people should definitely try to influence this with their own minds and see if, like, you know, group meditation or group prayer, or like the Palladian uh, channelers are saying, can actually affect your reality. Because, I mean, we're going to find out in the near future. And wouldn't that be cool? Uh -huh. All right, we got about 40 seconds left. Do me a favor, tell everybody where they can find your YouTube channel, your music, your information. Hey guys, you can find me at uh, bloodybloodybloody.com for my music, at Sexy Gamer on Twitter, that's at Sexy Gamer on Twitter, or Society's Rejects on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe to Spaced Out Radio Live to participate in the live chat. Oh, thank you so much for the shameless plug there. Uh, Callie, good luck in your success with your channel and everything that you do. I really do appreciate you taking the time, hanging out with us. You hold on for a quick second because I got to get ready for the next half hour of Spaced Out Radio. So if you're still with us, stay tuned because we have the SOR Newswire and the Thought of the Dave coming on up. And it's always a lot of fun when we get into the news. So... Stay with us. More Spaced Out Radio right after this.
Need that weekend supernatural fix? Look no further than Spaced Out Saturday right here at spacedoutradio.com. I'm Stacy Edwards. And I'm John Edwards. Each Saturday night, Stacy and I are going to bring you the best in paranormal, cryptids, UFOs, you name it, and we're going there. It's all about the experience and to share the knowledge with all of you. So tune us in every Saturday night on Spaced Out Saturdays starting at 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, only at spacedoutradio.com. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. Hey everybody, the SOR Space Travelers is open. For just five bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience is proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. So for more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. If you like it hot, real hot then heat up your meals with bumblefoot hot sauce get your bumblefoot hot sauce today the sauce bumblelicious and the four million scoville unit bumble we're going in hot real hot coming out even hotter keep the milk nearby and tantalize your taste buds tonight bumblefoot hot sauce available now at kajans.com Hey, Spaced Out Radio fans, it's John Rezig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. Our goal is to make the life of veterans, first responders, and those with rare medical conditions 10% happier. We do this by donating one grant item, ranging from dance to therapy programs to prosthetic limbs, to those who need it most. To contribute to Spaced Out Radio's official charity, head over to chivecharities.org and become a donor today. Hello, space travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month. And follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at YouTube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye! Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes, it's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver, the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. 
At spacedoutradio.com, we are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at spacedoutradio.com today. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. We're bringing you something new to the documentary world. Beyond the Spectrum will take you on an historic tour of topics like no other. Sasquatch, UFOs, government secrecy, and more. Keeping you on the edge of your seats through the eyes of legendary truth seekers like Steve Bassett, Richard Dolan, Dr. Jeff Meldrum, and Jack Kasher. Head on over to Amazon Prime or Tubi TV and check us out. Please leave a comment for the filmmakers on their film's Amazon page. We rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Thank you so much for joining us. want to remind you that if you've missed most of this show or others, you can check out our free archives at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do old Davey the favor. Hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and staying up to date on what's happening in the weird and strange with Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Speaking of the news, let's get to it, shall we? The news is always changing, which is why we bring you the SOR Newswire at the back end of every show where we get to the weird, the strange, the wacky, and sometimes we get into the cryptids. Social distancing is necessary to help stop the spread of coronavirus around the world, including Turkey Mountain in Oklahoma. The riverfront landmark in Tulsa shared a post to its Facebook page Monday to say they're investigating several reports of a Sasquatch sighting on their grounds. Yeah, several people send in pictures of something on the trails that resembled Bigfoot. While there's no way of knowing what many of these people claim to have seen, Turkey Mountain took the time to say they'll investigate while also reminding its visitors to continue practicing social distancing, staying at least six feet apart or one Sasquatch arm length apart from one another. But they didn't say that. I had to throw that in. You know... Did they actually see Sasquatch? Now, I'm looking at this photo here that they posted on their Twitter page. I'm not buying it. I think this one's an outfit. And, you know, like, you know, I love the woo. You know, I love the woo. But old Davey isn't buying the woo here on this one. Nope. Not buying it. It doesn't look real. Too thin, too short. Looks like it's wearing a different color pants. And, you know, trying to hide behind a small tree is not what Sasquatch does. I'm not buying it. Now, maybe they do have Sasquatch in that area, but it ain't from this guy. It ain't from this guy. All right, moving on. Despite tough restrictions imposed by the government in an effort to contain the coronavirus pandemic that has ravaged Italy, some people there have been finding ways to venture outside. Under Italy's quarantine rules, anyone who wants to leave their home must fill out a form stating the reason for being outside and must submit it to a law enforcement when asked. Under a government decree, people many 
leave their home to buy groceries, work, and walk their dog among a limited set of activities. So far in the country, an estimated 101,739 people have the disease, including 11,591 deaths, most of any country so far. So some of the excuses that are being used? Love. One man from Ancilia, just south of Rome, said he was trying to win back an ex-fiance who broke off their relationship a few hours earlier. He wrote just love on his form. Gatherings. A man in his 20s wrote on his form that he was going to a friend's house to have dinner. A clear violation of the government's policy on gatherings. Meanwhile, two women lied and said they were visiting an elderly and sick aunt. After some digging by police, the aunt turned out to be a healthy 40-year-old woman. One man traveling from Formello to Rome, a 30-mile drive south, said he was going to buy cigarettes. Two men declared they were going shopping, only for police to find out that they were actually selling drugs instead. In northern Italy, a man whom police stopped said he was under the impression that wine was considered a necessity and was looking to go purchase a bottle. English language Italian news site The Local reported that some people were exhausting their pets during walks in efforts to stay outside. The site reported that some people walking their four-legged friends up to five times a day. Some local mayors have had it with people violating orders to stay inside. Some have complained of people walking their cats. One actually claimed on a forum that he was out feeding pigeons. One mayor said he stopped a jogger with a visibly worn out dog. I stopped and said, look, this isn't a movie. You aren't Will Smith in I Am Legend. Go home. And another said he heard rumors that people wanted to throw a graduation party. We'll send the police over with flamethrowers, he said. <laughs> Nice mayor. Nice, nice mayor. Four dedicated zookeepers have moved into their zoo to self-isolate with the animals. The members of the Paradise Park in Hale, Cornwall, are now living on site so they can continue to care for the birds and animals while they isolate themselves. The family-run business has an on-home site. And now Izzy Wheatley, Sarah Jane Gelbert, Emily Foden and Layla Richardson will be based there for the foreseeable future. Paradise Park is home to 1,200 birds and mammals that still require care despite the pandemic. Izzy said, I had been thinking about how to handle this situation we all find ourselves in, re-isolating and social distancing, as I have a big family, including an elderly member who has gone in to 12 weeks isolation. At the same time, the directors were having the same thoughts about using the house that is on site, and when it became free... We had to do it. Myself and two other keepers, Rachel and Emily, then moved into the on-site house on Saturday so that way they could care for the animals. Izzy and the others will continue looking after the animals by feeding and cleaning and giving medication where required. She says, we just have under 1,200 individual birds and mammals to look after, feeding, cleaning, giving medication, supplying enrichment activities, and any other vital maintenance. We are being supported by other keepers who are coming in at different times of the day so they could keep separate. And obviously, we are keeping our distance from them. This is being achieved by changing rotations and splitting up areas of the park to ensure they're all working in different areas. That's kind of cool. Animals need love, too. Now, a Maryland winery is observing social distancing protocol in its curbside deliveries with an unusual employee, a delivery dog. Oh, how brilliant is this? Stonehouse Urban Winery in Hangerstown has been offering curbside pickup to abide by the government's orders during the pandemic and to make sure employees and customers keep safe and distance in the deliveries are being made by a 75-pound brindle boxer named Soda Pop. Yeah, we've had people call in just specifically to have Soda Pop bring wine out to them. People who've never even been here before, says Lori Yatta. Yatta said the 11-year-old canine only carries two bottles of wine at a time and gets plenty of breaks to keep him from getting exhausted. She said the business is, is trying to keep an optimistic outlook during this pandemic. We are looking for the positive side in this, a.k.a. how can we make money? Closing the store allows us to do many things we normally cannot keep up with. We are making tons of wine. We are hoping to get into the festival in fall, which means we got to make more wine. See, all about money for them. Oh, and the winos are supporting it. Yeah, bring that dog over here. 
When NASA and astronauts return to the moon in 2024, they'll need a lunar base that allows them to stay on the surface. And when the astronauts may build their base using something readily available, their urine! What? As a part of the Artemis program, the first woman and next man on the moon will be landing at the lunar south pole. It's a place with fluctuating temperatures that will require astronauts to learn how to live and operate on the surface of another celestial body. Unfortunately, the astronauts can't just land a habitat on the lunar surface and set up shop. Instead, they'll have to build a safe habitat to protect them from radiation, extreme temperature swings ranging from negative 9 degrees Fahrenheit to negative 313 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that's cold. And impacts of the micrometeorites. Anyways, another goal of the Artemis program is for astronauts to find and use water on the moon along with their other resources at their disposal or beneath the surface to allow long-term exploration. Artemis is the sustainable way of returning to the moon for good, said Administrator Jim Bridenstein. Unlike the Apollo program, this suggests a sustained presence on and around the moon. Transporting materials is going to be expensive, though. Flying about one pound of material from Earth to the moon can cost $10,000. This is why so many things designed from space travel are lightweight. Yeah. So anyways... Materials found on the moon, or those that the astronauts would already have with them, are key to the agency's sustainable approach. Previous studies of possible building material for lunar bases relied on materials that would have been brought to the moon. Now, what about this P thing? Let's, let's find this. There's lots of paragraphs in here. All right. Don't tell me. Okay. Uh, is that it? No. No. Shirk, where's your highlighter? Should have highlighted this story. Okay, here it is. Yeah. Yeah, apparently scientists want to test how the samples would react in a vacuum, simulating the most severe conditions on the lunar surface. And, uh, yeah, we have not yet investigated, they said, on how the area would be extracted from, or urea would be extracted from urine as we are processing whether that would be really necessary, but perhaps its other components could also be used for geopolymer concrete. So basically what they want to do is they want to pee in the concrete to make buildings sustainable on the moon. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? All right. Let's go. The power generating units of a nuclear plant in southern China were shut down twice last week after its water filters were blocked by masses of small shrimp. The safety regulator said big shoals of the tiny acetes, krill like shrimp, that are just a few centimeters long, flooded the seawater diversion channel and circulating in the pump stations of the Yangjiang Nuclear Power Station in Guangdong Province on March 24th. They crippled the water pumping stations and caused one of the nuclear plant's six power generating units to go into automatic safety shutdown while the other five ran at 80% capacity. The unit that shut down was powered up again the next day after station staff cleared the krill from its filters but soon after the next day well the krill were back again the very next day the krill came back they thought they were goners but the krill came back they just couldn't stay away anyhow yeah you know this was uh, the incident was rated a level one on the international nuclear and radiological event scale meaning that it was an anomaly that had no safety or health consequences can we really believe anything out of China these days? Anyways, only two nuclear events have rated in the top scale as level seven major incidents. That was the Chernobyl disaster in 1986 and the Fukushima disaster in 2011. On that note, I guess it's time for the thought of the day. Let's get to it, shall we? Now I got to go find Marty's clown to make sure I didn't get ripped off there. Oh, there it is. That's a... Boy, that's a trailer park clown. Thanks, Marty. Thought of the day happens every night at this time. Where we ask a question on our tw Facebook and Twitter pages. <laughs> and then read your responses on the air. Because we love the audience participation around here. Today's thought of the day is as follows. What are your top three Mandela Effect cases? Jody. 
Well, I just had one happen to me today, she says, that I have been researching and verifying with my family all morning. It's not a big case, but interesting to me because I have proved that I have changed timelines before. And it happened again this morning after listening to another radio show. All right. She says, my Mandela effect has to do with Robbie Williams and buying his tape in England on vacation when he was with the band Take That, except I was listening to him before I went and bought the cassette in London, England in 1988. The band formed on this timeline in 1989-90. So that is interesting because my family all just verified me liking and listening to him on the trip that we took a year before the band got together. So interesting only to me, but still kind of neat. The song I was into, singing and listening to, was from an album, and the album on this timeline did not come out until 1995. Oh, that one is weird. That is totally weird. Tim, Kazam versus Shazam, Sinbad versus Shaquille O'Neal, the only ones I know, he says. All right, let's get to Sparkles. Sparkles says, I don't believe in it. I believe there's lots of, oh, oh, she's going to wave the I don't believe it. Sparkles, come on. Anyways, I don't believe it. I believe there is a lot of misremembering as well as companies revamping logos to modernize them, etc. Also, ways of speaking change. An example, do you remember when we used the word anyway? I have noticed for some years that people started to say anyways instead of anyway. It caught my attention and now I usually only hear anyways. I have heard you say it too, Dave. Yes, I have. Nor the Bible stuff. People always saying words change, and as they were looking at the Bible, my question always has been, when the words change, do the type of style remain the same? The more things change, the more they stay the same. Remember Cinderella? That was a good band. Anyways, no one has ever responded. It was a straight question of curiosity. I was not mocking and made clear. In fact... I have a collection of really old Bibles and did some research for our friend Lori McDonald a couple of years ago. She is a staunch believer in the Mandela effect. Sorry, I know this is opposite of the question, but I just had to comment. I hope it's okay. If not, let me know, and I will behave myself in the future. Guess what? We read it. We read it because we love you around here, Sparkles. Love you. All right. Let's move on. Mike, C-3PO's leg, silver. Shazam was definitely a movie. And it's Oscar Mayer, not Oscar Meyer. That's kind of weird. That's one of the logos. All right, Bob. I've never heard of the effect till this morning when I read your post, but just last night I experienced it. Here's the story. Back in 1990 or 1966 when I was a boy, I loved a TV show called Time Tunnel. My favorite episode is when Tony the Time Traveler goes back to Pearl Harbor and tries to save his father. I had the distinct recollection these past 54 years, the final scene took place on the dock with Tony's father dying outside. Last night, I bought season one of Time Tunnel to show my kids when I watched it as a kid. Lo and behold, Tony's dad dies indoors in a scene nothing similar to what I had remembered all of these years. False memories are fascinating. Tim, Ed McMahon was not a public service clearinghouse spokesperson. The last word to Queens, we are the champions, are not of the world. The Wicked Queen does not say mirror, mirror on the wall. It's magic mirror on the wall. Oh, Tim. Tim is the reality breaker here. He was totally, totally the reality breaker. My goodness, just hurts our feelings there. Jeff, braces on Jaws, girlfriend in Moonraker. I have no idea what that means. I really don't. But that is interesting. All right. Gil, the Mona Lisa, now smiling, and Silence of the Lambs. Hello, Clarice. Apparently never happened. Kevin, I went to kindergarten. I have kept my class picture for 48 years, and I've looked at it hundreds of times. Now it says kindergarten. I never heard of kindergarten. 
Do not tell me I am not remembering things, right? This is just the tip of the iceberg of things that have changed and physically altered in reality. The Mandela effect is very real, and it's like living constantly in the twilight zone. See, I always remember it as kindergarten with a T, not a D. All right, then he goes... uh, You know, everybody remembers Mr. Rogers singing, It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Check again. It's changed. Now he says, It's a Beautiful Day in this Neighborhood. And Kevin goes on for a third one. He goes, I have had so much change. I watched my Star Wars trilogy VHS tapes with my kids back in 2012. The movies were fine. I put in the same VHS tapes back on 2017, and they all have changed. Where C-3PO now not only has a silver leg, but a two-inch antenna sticking out of his forehead. Not my reality. There's your new hashtag. Not my reality. Game. Your heart moving from the right side to the middle of the chest, not being a show and ice at the snow and ice at the North Pole, and three doors of the JFK changing from uh, the doors of uh, JFK's limo changing from two to four. Amy, I swear they are happening as we speak. This is so bizarre because I've been thinking about this a lot. Lisa, here's my main one out of many, but I used to read my kids the Berenstein Bears, and now I know beyond the doubt. That how it was spelt because I have a friend in California who has the same last name as Steen. As I always noted how her name was pronounced Stein, whereas Baron Steen was pronounced Steen. Christine, Mandela was freed from prison, Baron Steen bears, and Tank Man was run over. He was not run over. He was not run over. They came and captured him. That's the way it goes. But whatever. All right. We want to say thank you to everybody participating in the Thought of the Dave. We will do it all again for the next show on Twitter and on Facebook. We also say a big thanks to Captain Shirk for getting our news ready for the SOR Newswire, which is always found at spacedoutradio.com or on Facebook at SOR Newswire. And thank you to Callie for coming in to talk about the Mandela Effect Her YouTube channel, Society's Reject. We really appreciate that. Go make sure you subscribe to that as well. We got Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thal rocking in the background with Little Brother is Watching. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio, rocking us in and out of every single show. Get your horns up for the guitar god himself. Special thanks to everybody listening in at home, at work, in your cars, wherever you may be. Special thanks to everybody in our chat rooms. On YouTube, Twitter, at hashtag Spaced Out Radio. You are beautiful snarkers and snarkettes tonight. As well on Facebook, Spreaker, LGAB, Revolution Radio, and our website, spacedoutradio.com. Remember, this show is copyrighted by Spaced Out Radio and SOR Media Ventures Limited. Thank you so much for sharing your night with us, because together, my friends... We own the night. Mr. Bumblefoot. We need a favor. We need you to take us home. Have a great night, everybody. We're going to do it all again tomorrow. I hope all of you take the time to join us. I'll be here. How about you make some time for us? We're going to have some fun. Have a good night. See you tomorrow.